Luke chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, as Linus shared them with us this morning on the screen. We're going to talk about this little box here. What are the three letters? <laughs> J-O-Y. It's, it's the, that wonderful little acrostic we learned in Sunday school many, 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 many moons ago. J-O-Y, J-O-Y, surely that must mean Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. I came across a collection of letters that children wrote to Santa. Some of them were pretty good. This one in particular said, Dear Santa, there are three little boys who live at our house. There is Owen, he is two. There is Bram, he is four. And there is Jacob, he is seven. Owen is good some of the time. Bram is good some of the time, but Jacob is good all of the time. I am Jacob. <laughs> Do you ever write one like that? <laughs> but my favorite, my favorite one is this. Dear Santa, you didn't bring me anything good last year. Matter of fact, you didn't bring me anything good the year before that. So, Santa, this is your last chance. <laughs> Signed, Elliot. <laughs> now, if you could put a word to describe Christmas and not using the word Jesus, you know, the appropriate response, what would it be? I think so. Some folks would use words like headache, <laughs> busy, expensive, and perhaps even bothersome. To many, Christmas is just another day, only a little more expensive and a lot more trouble as each year comes. I've heard even Christians use these words to describe the day we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how sad that an event that brought so much joy in heaven should bring so little joy here on earth. So this morning I would like to suggest to you as we celebrate this beautiful season of the year that this Christmas perhaps can be a time of J-O-Y, joy. No matter how broke you are or how busy you become, joy can be like love. It's not merely an emotion, but a decision. And I believe you can be as joyful as you want to be. You see, it's all in where you choose to put your focus, isn't it? So if you really want to have joy this Christmas season, let me suggest three places to focus your heart and mind upon. The first is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I myself no longer live but Christ lives in me. So I live my life in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Focus on the J in the letter joy. J stands for the appropriate response to Christmas, Jesus. In my favorite Christmas TV special, Charlie Brown asks if anyone knows what Christmas is about. And Linus 
recites the story of Christ's birth from Luke chapter 2, which we read together earlier. Have we forgotten that Christmas is not primarily about us? Not primarily about our family, our friends, our church, presence, but about Him. One year, a Christmas, on a Christmas afternoon, a visitor uh, asked a five-year-old little girl by the name of Ruth, did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? After a moment's hesitation, she answered, no, but it's not my birthday. Isn't it easy for us to get so wrapped up in the celebration that we forget what it is we are supposed to be celebrating? The world does that. It's become politically incorrect to say Merry Christmas, although we've been saying it forthrightly this year. Uh, it's, in, it's more appropriate to say Happy Holidays, but Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Mm. Merry Christmas wins out. But even without buying into the world's ways, you can forget, we do forget what Christmas is all about because we forget about the J in joy, Jesus. If you're a Christian, focusing on Jesus means that you not only remember the Savior in the manger, but remember the Savior in your heart. Remember that this baby grew up and went to the cross to pay for your sins as well as mine. That he rose again to give you new life. And that he lives in your heart to give you joy. I know we jokingly, we jokingly say in the Salvation Army, at least in my home core growing up, joy, 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 there is joy in the Salvation Army. And the kids would pipe in, try and find it joy, right? You know, because sometimes the outer countenance just doesn't show the inward experience that we are having in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And Paul reminds us, as Christians, as followers of the Christ, we have been crucified with Him, and He lives in us. And the life that we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of God the Son of God, who loves us and gave himself for us. Not only was Jesus born in Bethlehem, but by faith and his, by his Spirit, he lives in each of us. And that should fill us with great joy, should it not? The second focus is on the middle letter, O, which stands for others. Acts chapter 20, verse 20, uh, verse 35 says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You see, focusing on, on Jesus should also help us develop the attitude that he took he told would bring us joy, the attitude of reaching out. Heart to God, hand to man. Paul quotes Jesus here to point out the joy of generosity. Christmas is the time we celebrate the most wonderful gift God has given us in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. He, his focus in giving Christ to the world was His love for others, His love for you, His love for me. And He gave us an example that we, in return, should be willing to follow. Joy does not come from getting all we can get from others. Although as a young person growing up, I thought it would be nice to experience that. And most of us in our younger days would think that way. 
But it doesn't come from getting all we can from others. It comes from giving all we can give to help one another. It is this focus on others that brings us joy. If you want to know joy at Christmas, then discover the joy of giving. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, whatever you do to the least of these, you do it to me. You do it to me. So if you want joy this Christmas, find someone in need and in the name of Christ, give to them of your time and your treasures. Mia is in need this week for the next six and a half days of people filling a kettle spot. And I know you're going to sign your names as you walk out here this morning onto that little piece of paper. If not, I'll sign your name for you. No, <laughs> no. Help by reaching out to others in the name of Christ. Time, treasures, whatever. You see, there are plenty of people lonely. There are plenty of people in need. And the Holy Spirit shows them to us. And if we are willing to look for them, we will see them. The Army does a, a beautiful media publication uh, a couple of years back where uh, it said we don't always see the need. And it's uh, a picture of uh, individuals blended into the background. And then all of a sudden they move and step out of the background and you see uh, the poverty, uh, or the need that they're experiencing. If we want to see them, we will see them because the Spirit enables us to. The Bible says that you will find joy by focusing on others instead of yourself. J for Jesus, O for others, and then the third focus is on yourself. Yet there's there is a sense in which we are to focus on ourselves as well. Your own attitudes determine whether or not you will experience joy this year. You can let worry, stress, unforgiveness, or discouragement rob you of the joy of Jesus. You see, life assures me that everyone struggles sometime, but we need to understand attitude is not automatic. Attitude is something we create, we plan out. You choose to allow these attitudes to rule you. How do I know? Because the Bible commands us not to allow these things to rule our lives, and God would not command us to do what we cannot do except in his strength. Listen to what the Bible says about worry and stress. Carol and I were talking about this earlier. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Unforgiveness. Ephesians 4, 32, and be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Discouragement. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, 17, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which hath loved us, hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. The fact is, we can be full of faith and at the same time full of doubt, or full of doubt, full of the Spirit's joy or full of the world's woes. Consider your thoughts. Listen to your words. 
Watch your actions and ask yourselves, do I have the joy of the Lord or am I wallowing in the mud hole of my own tears? Christmas is based on an exchange of gifts. The gift of God to man, the unspeakable gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, the gift of man to God when we present our bodies as living sacrifices. You, you are the only person who can decide whether or not this is going to be a joyful time for you. God has a gift for you this Christmas. It's the joy that you unwrap by focusing on Jesus, others, and then yourself. Don't wait until December the 25th to unwrap that gift. Open it now and enjoy it. God, you offer us joy it's right there in your hands waiting for us. Joy brings strength and patience. When there is sorrow, we know joy comes in the morning. And yet our lives are overcrowded by other things. But forgiveness. Forgiveness makes room for joy. Help us make room for joy by forgiving others, by forgiving ourselves. Help us forgive those who have said things behind our backs that hurt us as children. Those that will hurt us tomorrow. The person who took our heart and broke it. And then God... Will you fill the empty space with joy? And we will share that joy with the world. We will find God's joy. For God's joy lays in the manger. And we sing joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to us all, joy to the world. There is joy in the Lord, there is love in His Spirit, there is hope in the knowledge of Him. There's a fountain that flows like a river from heaven abounding in love to my soul. Joy can be yours when and where you put your focus. Jesus, others, yourself. It's a time of reflection. I'm going to invite you to stand with us and we're going to sing the words of this chorus. There is joy in the Lord. Use it as your prayer this morning to invite the, the presence of Jesus Christ into your life and to experience a Christmas joy, a joy that only He can bring to us. Let us pray it together. There is joy.